Hey guys, welcome back. Um, so I've done uh, my bounty. Uh, you notice the sparkly box kicking around here. Um, ooh, there's a bond skimmer. Um, I killed some of these guys, which took way too long. Um, I've never bought Grillat pack. Uh, so it's something that <laughs> there's a bit of grind going on. Um, with this sparkly box, however, uh, means that I've killed a fire blob. So um, most of the variants of different baddies have um, a, a rare variant. So there'll be uh, one specific type of baddie that you can get. Uh, you can kill that, and when you do, you get uh, a sparkly uh, bounty box. So if you go and you uh, cash in the sparkly bounty box, they give you a bonus. Uh, it's 250 grillettes. Um, probably most of the veterans will know that. Um, typically those guys are pretty nasty. So the fire blob in this case, he is on fire. Um, but he also, when he jumps and uh, hits the ground, um, he drops a, uh, a small explosion, very similar to your bomb. Uh, I think I'm going to hop out here. So some of the other ones, I mean, um, you get the Elite uh, Green Baddie, or the Elite Rebel, as they're calling them now. Um, those guys do the sword spin, I believe, and the fire. They do like a, they shoot a nuke shot or whatever, the fire explosion. The bomb arrow combo. You see the uh, rats, there will be a bomb rat that'll explode. Uh, if you touch it. <laughs> yeah. There's also a um, uh, bandit leader. Uh, the bandit leader will run at you. He's a little fast. He's got extra help. Extra hit points. Um, and he will do the swirl attack as well. I've never encountered a rare pirate. Pirates are the originals. Um... Skullbat, which just moves around faster, has more HP. Uh, there is, in fact, a golden blob. I have fought, I have seen golden blob. Uh, it's not the giant blob. The giant blob is not the rare one. Um, when you fight the green blobs, there is a little yellow golden blob guy, and they will give you 100 bucks extra, um, as well as the 250 if you get them with a bounty. I've seen that twice ever, so, you know, uh, extremely rare. The other ones are rather less rare. There's also a skull snake, or a black snake. It's got a little skull head on them. Um, those are pretty nasty, but they uh, go down pretty quick. They hit really hard, and they run really fast, but uh, one of the easier ones to get, for sure, when you're fighting the elites. Okay. I'm going to cash in my Dark Blobs, doing His Majesty an honor. Yep, thanks. Oh, looky. Oh, that guy doesn't do a very good job of explaining it, but hopefully everybody's on page. Okay. So, now that I'm out of there, I'm going to head into my house. So uh, last time I'd set up these uh, stone pieces underneath. I'd actually mentioned um, that sometimes I like to use the uh, acorn fence. I figured that I would throw that in there, show you guys what that looked like. Uh, I'm going to turn the lights on. It's a little dark. There we go. Sometimes it's easier to see the build, like if you're doing your build. Uh, with the light on. Okay, so I'm just uh, pressing delete on the keyboard, selecting these guys, and clicking delete. Delete, delete. So it's a shortcut. Again, the shortcuts make the housing uh, a little bit more manageable for people who are not as patient. Um, I like it, I can get more done uh, when I'm doing a build. 
Okay, so this guy's obviously not layer zero. Uh, this is layer one, the bush is layer one. To get the acorn fence to appear underneath, you have to make it one layer below at least. So there you go, we have the uh, acorn fence below. I'm gonna pop one of these out, and duplicate it, and bring it over so we got the, uh, the nice clean edge on there that doesn't have any interruption. Take another one, put it down here. Take one more, maybe two more. I think I'm gonna need two. Down here, oh, that uh, editor thing is in the way. Okay, I'll do one more where that bush is sitting there. And hopefully this will just appear. I mean, it's if, if it's a layer zero, it should just show up underneath these bricks. Uh, the bricks are, I think, layer one by default, but they stack. So there are not actually layers. Like, the layers do not apply on the bricks. There's no layer option. It doesn't have a layer setting, but everything has a default layer. So because of the way that they function, like, because they stack... Um, I think that they're actually showing at layer one, just from you know previous experience. You can you can put something above them at layer two, for example. But under uh, if it's layer one or layer zero, then it uh, interacts. So uh, the uh, the brick will show um, over top of the object. Okay, so I'm gonna take this great big book. I'm gonna make it uh, up here for now and keep it there. And I want to just compare a couple items. Um, so we had a um, uh, a Nexus recently, um, and this was one of the items that we got there. Um, it was a nice uh, table setup. It was like uh, at the uh, Comic Con <laughs> in the Nexus. Um, so there was a bunch of cool stuff there, but uh, this particular um, neon bar, I got a couple of these. I also got a large neon bar. Um, that one's a little bit big, and it's a little bit confusing to use. Oh, large. Arr. Yeah, got to fix this, guys, if anybody uh, administrative is watching. So there's the large neon bar. It's it's a little unwieldy. Um, I have a limited space in this section, so I'm not... I'm tempted to use it, but I don't know if I want to. Um, if I keep it here, then people can't walk up behind. Um, and that's actually... Uh, I mean, it's kind of spoiling what I'm going to build here. I'm going to have a little section where you can come up inside and... and interact up here. So mm, I'm tempted to use it, but I don't think I'm going to. So I'll keep it over here for now. I'll throw it in the trees. Got it here, large neon bar. Okay, so we have this bar, um, and you notice right away it's a little smaller. Um, it's also kind of like a wooden appearance, obviously. <laughs> um, this one here, uh, it's long, and it also has a different um, interaction with the player. So if I walk into it, it shows up um, above the player. Whereas if I walk into this other bar, they ruined this bar. This one used to have the same thing where you could walk behind it, but it does not have that anymore. Like it used to have um, a half uh, a half a unit of um, space that would uh, overlap the player, and now it just interrupts the player entirely. So if you go at it this way, you can't any longer walk up underneath it. Okay, this one you can. Uh, oh, not on that layer. You walk on the side. This one, you can't do the side thing. I think if you turn it up, then this one does it the other way. Anyways, it's got a little bit of different um, collision. Like, the way that the collisions are set up is slightly different. Oh, no. Okay, I stand corrected. It's just on the side. Well, it is bigger, and it fits the space, and it fits the idea I'm working on, so I'll use this one. I like the appearance of it, too. It's kind of different. It gives that, uh, you know... Uh, initial wow factor when somebody walks into the house they're like wow I've never seen that furniture before and that's kind of the thing with Nexus or like Rev stuff um, as you go along you'll find there's a lot of neat or kind of you know unique items that show up in there uh, I think we're almost due for Nexus maybe in a couple of months we'll see one usually there's one in the summer sometime like July August or something like that one year we actually got two but it was a long time ago Okay, um, so I'm going to try and use this half increment to center this guy on here. See how it's, it's just overlapping the bars, and I want to kind of bring it down. Um, I'm going to confirm with my 
handy dandy barrel right here that it's actually on a single unit vertically, which it is. It's showing properly there. Okay, so the idea here is that I want to create a little kiosk. Make it a little uh, like coffee kind of a, a deal up here. You can come in and order something or, you know, have some food or drinks available on the bar. So uh, I'm going to do uh, an oven. You throw some ovens in there so they can actually cook. Wow, all that lovely lunar stuff has got in the way of my stove shortcut. Uh-oh. Okay, so I got a couple of these guys. I'm going to throw that one, and I'm going to throw the other one down. This is um, from Fairytale Nexus. It was a Three Bears story. Okay, and clear this. Um, I'm going to... Let's see, uh, what else do I need? I need a bath mat. Bath mat. No, no, ath, ath mat. Yeah, bath basket, sure, I'll use that. But bath mat for sure, 100% bath mat. Okay, so clear that. I'm gonna search again, let's see. Um, I'm gonna look for table, oh, tail, no. Table. Just type ta table really slowly. Uh, and I would really like to use my wicker tables, but I know those are in my guild house. So in this case, let's make it a magic table. Let's use the magic tables. They're a little bit long. Um, you can kind of throw some more stuff on there. They're kind of cool. Okay, so I got my uh, oven here. I'm put my oven up here. Um, one handy trick um, when you're building, um, especially up high, like we've got this this uh, retaining wall that we built another time in another session there. Um, when you want to make it appear that an object is above the the you know um, the background, like so we have these trees that are background, we can actually overlap. So um, I know that as a player, if I'm moving around here. I can actually walk into the edge of these trees a little bit. And I'm going to cover the entire floor. Like, I'm just going to totally paste this up. So um, if I have that little bit of overlap, it actually gives the effect that this um, this layer of um, furniture is going to be above this particular tree, right? Or this tree here might, might have that same effect. So looking at it that way, like, I want to keep my stove over. I'm probably going to have a wall around here, or maybe these bushes will continue up. Um, yeah, so be conscious of like what's going on in your background and how much you intend to fill the space below. Okay, so I'm gonna throw this uh, oven up here as well. Uh, maybe right there. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll check it out in a minute. I'll see what I'm gonna do with that. And the book, um, I was hoping to use the book as an awning, but I think maybe I'll use it as a shelf instead. Keep a bunch of cool stuff up on there at the end. So um, really quick. Uh, there's a basic uh, kind of philosophy that I follow when I'm building. Um, I try and hedge out an area with large objects first. So you can see I got the book in there, I got these shelves. Um, I probably will shift these up. The only problem is there's a bush. Um, this bar is in here, it's pretty central, and it's large. Like all the big stuff is gonna go in first. Um, I'm gonna throw these these larger ob objects in. These guys I'll, I'll leave till the end. I'll come and fill in the extra spaces, especially with stuff like floor tiling. Um, with the floor tiles, I don't want to um, like go in and throw a bunch of floor tiles on the floor and then have a hard time manipulating or like moving around um, these guys, right? If, if it's something where I want to shift it around or I want to move it a little bit, um, having these guys laid down already actually causes problems when you're trying to select those objects. Okay, so I'm going to flip this up here. There's kind of like maybe three passes that I would do on any given build. And I mean, it's it's elastic you know there's sometimes there's more sometimes there's less it's just the way that it goes okay so i'm going to keep that book up there use the bar there no i know i wanted you to cover the bush before but now that's changed mr bar mr bar okay uh keep one of on one side one on the other side in fact you know what i'm gonna do it i'm gonna keep one on one side one on the other and try and keep that as parallel as possible. 
getting that symmetry going on. But what I'm going to do here, um, I'm actually going to, uh, you know what, I'll do it after. I'll do it after. Keep watching. I'll show you a surprise with that. Okay, um, so I had placed these flowers down here before. Um, I'm just going to check them down on the path because I'm going to start making this into a little restaurant. Okay. I'm going to throw these guys down here. And it's almost time for my favorite furniture object, but not quite. Okay. So I'll throw one up here. No, that's on top of the tree. Great. Uh, I'll probably never touch those again. Okay. So, uh, magic table. I'm going to throw that in here. I'm going to keep it um, layer zero. So because it's layer zero, it's going to appear under um, these bushes down here. So I can get the effect like it's actually kind of butted up against or... Um, yeah, unfortunately the shape and size of this area is a little bit tight, but that's okay. Um, so I'm going to keep it down against here, and you get the impression that it's like kind of sitting underneath those, um, underneath the level of the hedge. Keep my barrel up there. This one's kind of cool. It's supposed to be shampoo. Um, I use it as a, you know, it looks like a ketchup and a little bottle of something. I don't know what, soda or something. I don't know. I don't know. It looks like condiments that you would see like at a diner or something, like a little tray of condiments. Nobody knows that it's actually shampoo. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, so I'm keeping this up here. Gonna move my bar up. Uh, oh, I lost my half increment on my bar. Okay. Okay, looking good, looking good all the way around. I'm keeping this down here, and I need some chairs. 